All right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. A busy year, already over a thousand wines in the database. I know Thaddeus, you got 1,400, but I take notes, not just pictures. All right, the Scarbolo Winery, and I know I recognize this label, and uh, you know, kind of like a wheel and all different sizes leading up to one, and saying this is shows the motion you have once a year to make your wines and the progression that you go through in life a really deep thinker but uh the wines outstanding this is a small family owned vineyard 30 hectares in the grave doc and well, the friuli is uh the area the right bank of the river is where the vineyards are located it's really a narrow stretch about 60 miles of alluvial soils to give you a really complex minerality to all of these wines and uh this is the pinot grigio which is what they're best known for in this region this wine's got some nice pear and lemon citrus pretty white flowers and that distinct minerality showing through even on the nose a bright and refreshing wine with that zesty lemon citrus and a nice salty mineral note at the end very good juice at 1850 then the Pinot Grigio Ramato and uh, Ramato is a style where they leave the skin in contact with the juice so Pinot Grigio actually is a gray grape and you will make a pink wine from it and this wine stays uh, the grapes stay on the skin for six days here they're harvested also a week later to give them a little more ripeness and this is made from the oldest vines on the property and uh, this wine has a beautiful bouquet of ripe melon, white peach, and apple-like fruit with that nice minerality showing here also. A bit funky on the second day, a little bit of a barnyard coming out, a little James Brown going on there with some light floral notes. And uh, really, uh, um, really beautiful little tobacco note also, kind of really opening up and, and showcasing some really unique aromas here. This wine has some lovely fruit, a creamy texture on the palate, lots of minerality, a long layered finish. It's an excellent example of a Romano style Pinot Grigio for $27. The Sauvignon, kind of a medium sized Sauvignon, some nice uh, aromatic uh, notes, that passion fruit, hints of green herbs, kind of a style in between New Zealand and the Loire Valley, bright and refreshing white on the tongue, a nice savory finish leaving your tongue, salivating for food, an excellent example of Sauvignon from Friuli at 1850. And then the Reds, which, you know, the Whites are what they're known for in this area. But the reds for me, wow, eye-opening, especially at this price. The Merlot and Cabernet for $18.50. The Merlot, just wonderful acidity, silky tannins. This wine's got a lot of nice ripe plum and cherry fruit, a bit of sweet herbs, and that minerality that's distinct in all these wines shown on the nose here. Aged for one year in big barrels. The total production here is 200,000 bottles, so a relatively small producer. Most of that is Pinot Grigio and this Merlot. A very silky and plush wine on the palate. One of the things I love about Merlot, it has a lovely plush, velvety texture to it. And elegant style. This one's really fresh, really well balanced, a long layered finish, excellent juice at 18.50. Wow. Maybe the best value in Merlot that I've had all year. And then the Cabernet, which is a blend of Cabernet Franc and uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, 70-30. They just label it Cabernet here, so I guess if you have either Cabernet, you can call it Cabernet. Winterelli's Alzero says Cabernet on the label. Uh, this wine's got some nice white pepper spice, some tobacco, some minty notes coming out on the second day. Balsamic, really dark berry fruit, uh, blueberry, dark currant, and a uh, really good deal of that dark berry fruit on the tongue with an array of that spice, the pepper, the dark cocoa, and tobacco, and a firm hand of acidity, and some tannins here in this wine also. Uh, the Cabernet, excellent juice on the second day. Man, both of these wines showed beautifully. I couldn't figure out which one I liked the best. The Refusco was my favorite on the first day, and uh, they dried the grapes for this wine for three weeks, uh, so they lose 25% of their water. And there's three different kinds of Refuscos. This is the Del Pudonocolo uh, Rosso. So they have like three different clones, I guess, they use. This is supposedly the best one. And uh, they do fermentation and open top tonneau. They leave the wine on the skin for three months and then three years in large barrels. This wine's got 15 grams of residual sugar in it, but it does have wonderful acidity, an exotic uh, bouquet of spices, fresh earth, dark berry fruit, wild flowers, big, but still well balanced. You know, on the second day, it wasn't quite as good as the first day, I have to say. Still really nice, so I, I bumped it down a little bit. I have to say the, the Cabernet and the Merlot fared a little better after they have been opened, but still a lot of sweet berry and plum fruit. And nice acidity, this wine, and an array of spices through the finish. Just very exotic. This wine, uh, excellent as well. For $35.25, wow, maybe the best value in a lineup of reds that I've had from Italy this year. All right, that's what we had to drink with Scarbolo. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first.